Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, <laughs> Inner Harbor, <sighs> Chapter 11. Seth needed to be told there was only one way to do it, and that was straight out as a family. Ethan and Grace would bring him home as soon as Aubrey was settled with the babysitter. We shouldn't have let her out of our sight. Can't pace the kitchen, hands jammed in his pockets, gray eyes, hardest one. <laughs> God knows where she took off to, and instead of having answers, instead of straightening her ass out, we've got nothing. That's not entirely true. Anna brewed coffee. Wouldn't help to settle nerves, he thought, but everything would want it. Everybody would want it. I'll have a police report for a file. You couldn't very well drag her out of the station camera and force her to talk to you. It would have been a hell of a lot more satisfying than watching her walk. <laughs> momentarily perhaps but it remains in Seth's best interest and ours to handle everything in an official by the book manner how do you think Seth's gonna feel about that he whirled and the leading edge of his temper wiped out as his wife and his brother do you think he's gonna feel it it's in his best interest that we had Gloria and did nothing you did do something because she understood his frustration and it kept her voice calm. He agreed to meet her in my office. If she doesn't keep the appointment, it's another strike against her. She won't be anywhere near social services tomorrow, Phil began, but Sibyl will. And we're supposed to trust her. All she's done so far is lie. He didn't see her tonight, Phil said. I did. Yeah, and we know what part of your anatomy you're looking with, bro. Stop! In a step quickly between them as two pairs of piss girl, two pairs of eyes flash. You're not gonna beat each other out, other brainless in this house. She slapped the hand on Cam's chest. <laughs> then Phillips found them both immovable. It's not gonna help anyone if you rip pieces off each other. We need an untied, united front. Seth needs it. She had to push it harder when she heard the front door open. Now both of you sit out. Sit out, she hissed. The image of those ready fists swinging overhead added both urgency and authority to her voice. With her gaze still heated and locked, both men dragged out chairs and sat. And had time for one relief breath, for Seth came in, chilled by two dogs with cheerful swings. Hey, what's up? Still for grand vanished meanly. Lifetime of living with Gloria's wildly swinging moods had taught him to gauge atmosphere. The air in the kitchen was shimmering with tension and temper. Took a step back and froze as Ethan came in behind him and laid a hand on his shoulder. Coffee smells good, he said mildly, and the hand on his shoulder remained. Part restraint, part support, part support. I'll get some cups. Grace hurried past them to the cupboard. She knew she'd been off with her hands busy. Better off with her hands. Seth, do you want a Coke? What happened? His lips felt stiff and his hands cold. It's going to take a little while to explain it and all. Anna walked to him and put her hands on his cheeks. The first sort of business she determined was to erase that fear. And come in, but you don't have to worry. Did she gasp for more money again? She's coming around. Did they let her out of jail? No, come, sit down. We'll explain everything. She shook her head at Cam before he could speak and lock her eyes with Phillips as she got it set toward the table. He had more first-hand information. She decided it was best that it came from him. Where the hell was he supposed to start? Phillips checked the hand through his hair. Says, do you know anything about your mother's family? No. She used to tell me stuff. One day she'd say her parents were rich, really rolling in the dough, but they died and some slick lawyer stole all the money. Another day she said how she was an orphan and she'd run away from the foster home because her father tried to rape her, or how her mother was this movie star who gave her up for adoption so she wouldn't lose her career. She was always changing it. His gaze shifted around the room as he spoke, trying to repeat, Who cares? She demanded, throwing the soft green grace in front of him. Who the hell cares, anyway? There wasn't anybody she'd taped them there wasn't anybody or she tapped them for money <laughs> there is somebody and it seems she did tap them for money off and on Phil kept his voice quiet and calm the person would when she was in a frantic puppy we found out today that she has parents and a sister I don't have to go with them well I'm wringing his head as he searched out of here I don't know them I don't have to go with them no you don't Phil took that off if you need to know about them. I don't want to. His case is going to can't sleep. I don't want to know. He said I could stay. He said nothing was going to change that. Make him sick. See that desperation, but he pointed to you. You are staying. Nothing's going to change that. Sit down. You never sold anything by running. Look around, said. He's in turn with soft. The boys, you got five people here. Standing with you. 
He wanted to believe it. He didn't know how to explain that it was so much easier to believe in lies and threats than in promise. What are they going to do? How did they find me? Gloria called her sister a few weeks ago. Phil began with Seth. Sit down. You don't remember her sister? I don't remember anybody. Seth Hunter and Hunter's children. Well, it seems she spun a tale for the sister who told her that we stole you from her. She's full of shit. Seth! Anna drilled him with a look that made him squirm. She called her sister out of some money for a lawyer. She said she was broke and desperate. That we threatened her. She needed money to get you back. Seth wiped his mouth and back. She bought it? She must be an idiot. Maybe. Or maybe she soft touch. <laughs> Either way, the sister didn't buy the whole package. She wanted to check things out for herself. So she came to St. Chris. She's here? Says <laughs> Seth. I don't want to see her. I don't want to talk to her. You already have. So Bill is Gloria's sister. Says dark blue eyes widened in the anger flush, but she can't be. She's a doctor. She writes books. Nonetheless, she is. When Cam and Ethan and I drove down to Hampton, we saw her. You saw her? You saw Gloria? Yeah, we saw her. Hold on. Phil hit hand, Seth drew your So Bill was there, too. She was posting bail. So it all came out. She's a liar. Seth's so voice began. Just like Gloria. She's a damn liar. Let me finish. We agreed to meet them both in the morning in Anna's office. We have to get the facts that he had when the boy snatched his hands free. It's the only way we're going to fix this for good. I'm not going. You can decide that for yourself. We don't think Gloria is going to show Salsa Bill a little while ago. A little while ago, Gloria had given her a slip. She's gone. We're leaving Hope struggle to be back. She's gone again. <laughs> Looks that way. She took money out of Bill's wallet and split. Philip gains over these and judging his brother's reaction to use his angry resignation. Sibyl will be in Anna's office in the morning. I think it would be better if you went in with us and talked to her there. I don't have anything to say to her. I don't know her. I don't care about her. She should just go away and leave me alone. <laughs> she can't hurt you, says. I hate her. She's probably just like Gloria, only she pretends to be different. Philip thought of the fatigue, the guilt, the misery he'd seen on Sibyl's face, but he said that. But he said. That's for you to decide, too, but you need to see her and hear what she has to say to do that. She said she only seen you once. Gloria came to New York and stayed at Spill's place for a little while. You were about four. <clears throat> I don't remember. His face went stony with stubborn. We've stayed in a lot of places. Seth, I know it doesn't seem fair. Grace reached over to give the hands he had bought in the fists on the table. Quick reassurance was, but your aunt may be able to help. We'll all be there with you. Cam saw the refusal and Seth's eyes only for Quinn's don't walk away from a fight. He paused until Seth's gaze shifted to his until they won it. It was pride and the fear of not living up to the name. They giving him that stiff in his shoulders. I'll go, but nothing she says is going to mean dick to me. With his eyes hot and burning, he turned to him. Did you have sex with her? Seth! Man, his voice was sharp as a slap. But Philip only raised a hand. Maybe his first thing was to tell the boy it was none of his damn business. We knew how they passed the quick patrol and studied all. No, it didn't. Seth gave him. That's something. Then you come first. Phil saw the surprise flicker at Seth's eyes and said, I made a promise that you would, so you do. Nothing. And no one changes that. Beneath the warm thrill, Seth felt a guilty tug of shame. Sorry, he mumbled and stared down at his own hands. Fine. Philip said that the coffee that had gone cold in his cup. We'll hear what she has to say in the morning, then she'll hear what we have to say. When we have what you have to say, we'll go from there. She didn't know what she was going to say. She felt sick inside. The dreads of migraine hung over. Hangover fussed her brain, and her nerves were stretched to the breaking point at the prospect of facing the Quins in Seth. They had to hate her. She doubted very much that they could feel more contempt for her than she felt for herself. If what Philip had told her was true, the drugs, the beatings, the men, she had by all the sin of omission left her own nephew in hell. There was nothing they could say to her that was worse than what she had said to herself during the endless sleepless night. But she was sick with anticipation of what was to come as she pulled into the small pack parking lot attached to social services. It was bound to become ugly, she thought, as she tilted her rearview mirror and carefully applied lipstick. Hard words, cold looks, and she was so pitifully vulnerable to both. She could stand against him, she told herself. She could maintain the out 
word calm no matter what was happening on the inside. She learned that defense over the years. Remain aloof and detached and survive. And she would survive this if she could somehow assess mine whether whatever wounds she suffered would be worth it. She stepped out of the car, a cool and composed woman in an elegantly simple suit the color of mourning. Her hair was swept up and slick twist her makeup was subtle and flawless her stomach was raw and burning she stepped inside the lobby already the waiting area contained a scatter of people an infant whimpering restlessly in the arms of a woman whose eyes were glazed with fatigue a man in a flannel shirt and jeans sat with his face grim and his fist hands dangling between his knees two other women sat in a corner mother and daughter subpilled to seduce the younger woman had her head cradled on the other's shoulder and wept silently out of eyes blackened by fists so still subpilled turned away Dr. Griffin, told receptionist. Dr. Griffin, she told the receptionist. I have an appointment with Anna Spinelli. Yes, she's expecting you. Down this hall, second door on your left. Thank you. So Bill closed her hand around the strap of her purse and walked briskly to Anna's office. Her heart plummeted to her stomach when she reached the doorway. They were all there, waiting. Anna sat behind the desk, looking professional in a navy blazer, her hair pinned up. She was scanning an open file. Grace sat with her hand swallowed by Ethan's cam stood at the narrow window, scrowling. While well, Philip sat flipping through a magazine, Seth sat between them, staring down at the floor, his eyes contained by his lashes, curtained by his lashes, his mouth set, his shoulders hunched. She gathered her courage, started to speak, but Philip's eyes flickered up and found her. So one long look warned her he hadn't softened overnight. She ignored her trembling pulse and angled her head in acknowledgment. You're prompt, Dr. Griffin. He said and instantly all eyes were on her. She felt scalded and pinned all at once. She took the last step over the threshold into what she fully understood was winter. Thank you for seeing me. Oh, we're looking forward to it. Camp's voice, dangerously soft. His hands, the bill noted, had gone to Seth's shoulder in a gesture that was both possessive and protective. Ethan, would you close the door? Anna folded her hands on the open file. Please sit down, Dr. Griffin. It wouldn't be Sibyl and Anna here. All the friendly female connection that came from cozy kitchens and simmering pots was gone. Excepting that Sibyl took the vacant seat facing Anna's desk. She set her purse in her lap, clutching it with boneless fingers and smoothly, casually crossing her legs. Before we begin, I'd like to say something. Before we begin, I'd like to say something. She took a slow breath when Anna nodded in agreement. Still shifted and looked directly at Seth. He kept his eyes on her. I didn't come here to hurt you, Seth, or to make you unhappy. I'm sorry that it seemed to have done that. Living with the Quins is what you want, what you need, then I want to help see that you stay with them. Seth lifted his head now, stared right at her with eyes that were stunningly adult and harsh. I don't want your help. But you need it. She murmured, then turned back to Hannah. So Spill saw speculation there, which she hoped was an open mind. I don't know where Gloria is. I'm sorry. I gave my word I would bring her here this morning. It's been a very long time since I've seen her, and I I hadn't real mu realized how much she, how unstable she is. Unstable, came okay, Soren. That's a rich one. She contacted you? Anna began shooting her husband one morning. Look. Yes, a few weeks ago, she was very upset, claimed that Seth had been stolen from her, and that she needed money for her lawyer, who was going to fight a custody case. She was crying, nearly hysterical. She begged me to help her. I got information as I could. Who had Seth and where he was living? I sent her $5,000. Spill lifted her hands. I realized yesterday when I spoke with her that there was no lawyer. Gloria has always been a clever actress. I had forgotten that, or I chose to forgot that. Were you aware that she had a drug problem? No, again, not until yesterday when I saw her, spoke with her, it became clear that she's not capable at this time to handle the responsibility of a child. She doesn't want the responsibility of a child. Philip commented. So you said, Philip responded coolly. You indicated that she wanted money. I'm aware that money is important to Gloria. I'm also aware that she's not stable. But it's difficult for me to believe without proof that she's done all that you've claimed. You want proof? Came to for a fury all but abysmal ways around. You got it, sugar. Show her the letters, Hannah. Can't, can't sit down. Hannah sort of was firm before she turned back to say, well. Would you recognize your sister's handwriting? I don't know. I suppose I might. I have a copy of the letter found in Raymond Quinn's car when he was killed and one of the letters sent to us more recently. She took them out of the file and passed them over the desk and still put hands. Words and phrases leaped out of her, burned her head. Quinn, I've tried playing Nick on I. Oh, God, was all Sibyl could think, dear God. Letter to the Quinn after Ray's death was no better. Sibyl <sighs> so will her hands remain steady. 
She took this money? Professor Quinn drew out cashier's checks to Gloria Delatner twice for $10,000 once for five. Anna spoke clearly and without motion. He brought Seth Delatner to St. Christopher late last year. The letter you have is postmarked March 10th. The following day, Professor Quinn arranged to cash out his bonds, some stock, and he drew large sums of cash out of his bank account. On March 12th, he told Ethan he had business in Baltimore. On his return, he was killed in a single car accident. There was just over $40 in his wallet. No other money was found. He promised I wouldn't have to go back, said Sedoli. He was decent. He promised, and she knew he'd pay her. She asked for more? From you? From all of you? And miscalculated. Bill fling back studying the bill. Noting... Nothing showed, he noted, but her power. She won't bleed us, Dr. Griffin. She can threaten all she wants, but she won't bleed us, and she won't get set. You also have a copy of the letter I wrote to Glory DeLotner, Hannah said. I informed her that Seth was under the protection of social services, that an investigation by this office was underway on charges of child abuse. If she comes into this county, she'll be served with a restraining order and a warrant. She was furious, Grace spoke up. She called the house right after she got... Anna's letter. She threatened and demanded. She said she wanted money or she'd take Seth. I told her she was wrong. Grace looked over, held Seth's case. He's ours now. She sold her son. It was all Sibyl could think. It was just as Philip had said. All of it was just as he said. You have temporary guardianship? It'll be permanent shortly, Philip informed him. We intend to see to that. Spill laid the papers back on Anna's desk. Inside, she was cold, brutally cold, but she linked her fingers lightly on top of her purse and spoke evenly to Seth. Did she hit you? What the hell do you? What the hell do you care? Answers the question, Seth. So your aunt, what your life was like with your sister. Okay, fine. He bit the words off, but a sneer was wobbling around the edge. Sure. She knocked me around when she felt like it. If I was lucky, she was too drunk or stoned for her to hit hurt much. I could usually get away anyhow. He shucked as if it didn't matter in the least. Sometimes she got me by surprise. Maybe she hadn't been able to turn enough tricks to score, so she'd wake me up and pound on me a while, or she'd cry all over me. She wanted to turn away from that image. She turned away from the desperate strangers in the waiting area. Instead, she kept his gaze steady on Seth. Why didn't you tell anyone? Find someone to help you. Like who? Was she stupid? Set the, the cops? She told me what the cops would do. I wound up in juvie and some guy would use me like some of her Johns wanted to. They could do whatever they wanted once I was inside. As long as I was out, I could get away. She lied to you, Anna said softly, while Sibylla tried to wor find words, any words. The police would have helped. She knew, Sibylla. By the man who tried to touch you... Sure, she thought it was funny. Hell, when she's stoned, she thinks most everything is funny. It's when she's drunk that she gets mean. Could this monster the boy spoke of so casually be her sister? How? Do you know why she decided to contact Professor Quinn? No, I don't know anything about it. She got wired up one day, started talking about hitting a gold mine. She took off for a few days. She left you alone? Why, that should horrify her after everything she heard. Somebody couldn't say. Hey, I can take care of myself. When she came back, she was flying. Said I was finally going to be out of some use. She had some money, real money, because she went out and scored a lot of dope without hooking. She stayed stoned and happy for days. Then Ray came, said I could come with him. First, I thought it was like the guy she brought home, but he wasn't. I could tell. He looked sad and tired. His voice had changed, you know, it softened. She thought... He grieves, too. Then she saw the bright disgust come into his eyes. She came on to him, said so said shortly, and he got real upset. Didn't yell or anything, but he got real hard in the eyes. He made her leave. He had money with him, and he said if she wanted it, to leave. So she took it and went. He told me he had a house by the water and a dog, and that I could live there if I wanted, and no one would miss me. No one would mess with me. You went with him? He was old. Seth said, was, figured I could get away from him if he tried anything, but you could trust Ray. He was decent. Said I'd never have to go back to the way things were. And I won't. No matter what, I won't go back, and I don't trust you. His eyes were dull again. It's always control and deserve. Because you lied. You pretended to be decent. All you were doing was spying on us. You're right. She thought it the hardest thing she'd ever done, or would she would ever have done, to meet those scornful eyes in a child's face. And admit her own sins. 
You have no reason to trust me. I didn't help you. I could have all those years ago when she brought you to New York. <laughs> I didn't want to see it. It was easier not to. And when I came home one day and both of you were gone, I didn't do anything about that either. I told myself it wasn't my concern, that you weren't my responsibility. That wasn't just wrong. It was cowardly. You didn't want to believe her. Didn't want to hear the regret and the apology in her voice. He brought his f hands into his fists. Doesn't have anything to do with you now, either. She's my sister. I can't change that. Because it hurt to see the contempt in his eyes. She turned back to Anna. What can I do to help? Can I make a statement to you? Talk to your lawyer? I'm a licensed psychologist. Single lawyer's sister. I would assume that my opinion might carry weight toward the guardianship. I'm sure it would, Anna. Oh, it won't be easy for you. I have no feelings for her. Not proud to say that, but it's the simple truth. I feel nothing toward her whatsoever, and the sense of responsibility I thought I should feel to her is over. As much as he may be, as much as he may wise it, other, may wish it otherwise. I'm Seth's aunt, and I intend to help. <laughs> she rose and scanned the faces of the room while stomach people. I'm terribly sorry for all this. I realize that apology is useless. No excuses for what I did. Reasons, but no excuses. Perfectly clear that Seth is where he belongs, where he's happy. If you give me a moment to gather my thoughts, I'll give you a statement. She walked out without hurry and continued to the outside, where she could find air. Well, she went about it wrong, but she seems level right now. Cam got up, paced off some obscenity in the crowd. Off. She sure doesn't shake easily. I wonder, Anna murmured. She, too, was a trained observer, and instinct told her that there was a great deal more going on under that placid server than any of them might guess. Having her on our side will, without question, help. It might be best if you left the two of us alone so I can talk with her. But you'll want to call the lawyer, explain the situation, and see if he wants to depose her. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Frowned thoughtfully as the fingers drummed on the she has a She had a picture of Seth in her file flax. What? Anna blinked at him. I went through her things before she got back to the hotel last night. <laughs> Smiled a little, then shrugged as his sister all closed her eyes. <laughs> Seemed like the thing to do at the time. She's got this snapshot of Seth when he was little, tucked in her file flax. So what? said the man. So it was the only picture I found anywhere. It's interesting. He lifted his hands, dropped them. On another pass, it could have been that Sibyl knows something about Gloria's connection to Dad. Since we can't question Gloria, we ought to ask her. Seems to me, Ethan said slowly, that whatever she knows would have come from Gloria. Be tough to believe it. I think she'd tell us what she knows, he continued, but what she knows might not be fact. We don't know fact or fiction, Philip pointed out, until we ask her. Ask me what? Steady her, determined not to finish. Now to finish it out, Sibyl stepped back into the room and closed the door. Quietly, he had her back. The reason Gloria hit on our father. Philip roasted her eye. Their eyes were little. The reason she knew he would pay to protect Seth. Seth said he was a decent man. Seville's gaze roamed the face of him. I think you're proof of that. Decent man don't have a daughter's affairs with women half their age. Then walk away from a child. Conceived from that affair. Bitterness go to Philip's voice. Second of said towards Seville. And there's no way you're going to convince us that Ray slept with your sister behind her mother's back. Then walked away from his son. What? Without realizing it, Seville shot a hand out. Gripped his arm as much as Jock has to keep her balance. And she reeled from him. Of course he didn't. You told me you didn't believe that, Gloria, and your father. Others do. But that's... Where did you get the idea that sat with his son? His son by Gloria? It's easy enough to hear in town if you keep your eyes open. Philip narrowed his eyes at her face. It's something your sister planted. She claimed he molested her. Then she blackmails him. Sells him her son. He looked back and said in the Ray Queen's eye. I say it's a lie. Of course it's a lie. It's a horrible lie. Desperate to do at least this one thing right and well. She went to Seth, crouched in front of him. She wanted badly to take his hand, but resisted her impulse when he leaned away from her. Rickwin wasn't your father, Seth. He was your grandfather. Glorious, his daughter. His lips trembled. And those deep blue eyes, my grandfather. Yes, I'm sorry she didn't tell you. So sorry you didn't know before. He, she shook her head. She, I didn't realize this. There was confusion about this. I should have. I only learned about it myself a few weeks ago. She took her seat again, prepared. I'll tell you everything I know. End of chapter eleven.